ruler of the kings of the earth, gave that community assurance that they had not been abandoned. We often hear how the kingdom of Christ is something we await, that will be ours at the end of time. But in these words, we hear the assurance and the promise that God is with us now, was with us in the past, and will be with us in the future. Even though we've heard the promised ending of the story, we find ourselves living in the midst of it, relying on the fact that we have a place in God's kingdom and it is all around us, not something we simply wait for in the future. The kingdom of God is at hand. And because we are in the midst of it, we have been given the opportunity to bring the kingdom of God to bear in the present, in the now. In John's Gospel, we see Pilate wavering in interaction with Jesus. It's clear he knows it would be the right thing to do, but he also recognizes what would be easy and politically expedient, and he's torn between the two. Ultimately, Pilate caves to political pressure, denying that the truth he sees right in front of him. Jesus said, For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. On the brink of a four-week onslaught of advertising, focused on how much things matter and how things will make our lives happier and more fulfilling, where our culture focuses so much attention on consumerism and shop till you drop mentality, we have the opportunity to enter the season of Advent with a different perspective. I'm reminded of one of my favorite stories, the quilt maker's gift, or get surprised, I'm a quilt maker. It's a children, I wish I was a quilt maker, that's good, trust me. It's a children's story with a beautiful message about the joy of giving. The premise is this, I could read you the whole book, but we don't need a nap right now. A generous quilt maker sews the most beautiful quilts in the world and then gives them away. A greedy king, his storehouse stuffed with things, yearns for the one missing thing that will make him happy. What he finally figures out, because she won't make him, she won't sell him quilts. He's got to earn the quilt, and how he has to earn it is by giving everything away. And he starts with a marble. <coughs> but what he finally figures out is the joy that comes from sharing what he has with those who have left. And in the sharing, he comes to realize the beauty of being a servant. There's so much pressure from our culture to do more, buy more, be more, spend more than we sometimes feel, that we sometimes feel inadequate when we can't live up to that expectation. But here in this space of sanctuary, before Advent really begins, we can start with believing something really, really special. We are enough. We don't have to do anything or buy anything to be worthy of the love and honor and respect that Christ offers. That is the kingly gift that Christ bestows on us this and every Sunday and every other day throughout the year. And that is the gift we can share with the world to bring the kingdom to bear in the coming Advent season. With that gift in hand, we have the freedom to celebrate with joy, give thanks with what we have rather than what we've been told we lack, and give out of love, not insecurity or compulsion. It is to embrace the profoundly simple and simply profound message that God accepts us and loves us as we are. We have not only the privilege, but the gift of sharing that radical, unconventional wisdom in the coming season of Advent. So consider this your preseason training prep rally. Long live the King. Amen. Amen.